All right, let's get to this right now. This is going to be so cool. Sharks and hurricanes. Sounds like an NHL matchup, right? But it's the real deal. Researchers believe that sharks can be used to track and forecast hurricanes by tagging them with sensors and then just letting them go. You get a fleet of sharks, a fleet of sensors, and it's going to pick up some information that can be used for hurricane information. Try chomping on that right there, Ian. <laughs> Joining us to break it all down is the University of Delaware marine ecologist Aaron Carlisle. Uh, Aaron, thank you so much for joining us here today. It's a fascinating subject right mm -hmm. here. Yeah, great. Thanks for having me. I'm, I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you all. Yeah, well, first of all, I want to know what sensors are you putting on these sharks? What are you trying to measure? So we're trying to measure temperature, really, the water temperature. And so, as you all know, as a weather station, what really drives the intensity and uh, strength of a hurricane is how much heat is in the ocean. And so satellites that orbit the planet can sense the sea surface temperature from space, but it's just the very surface, it's skin. And so it's really what's going on beneath the surface that's important in terms of driving these hurricane dynamics. And so the general idea is that we take advantage of sharks doing their sharky thing, which is they swim around and they dive up and down mm -hmm. through the water column. And so if you put a certain kinds of tags on them that record uh, high resolution data on temperature and depth and salinity and some other things, Every time that tag breaks the surface, it'll transmit those data in real time to us via the satellites orbiting the planet. And that way, we can basically use the sharks as ocean sensors. They're platforms for observing the ocean. And so they go around, swim around. Whenever they come to the surface, they transmit these useful data that then get incorporated into different oceanographic models, hurricane predictions, and things like that. It's, so it's not that they're providing us with totally different information. It's just more of it in more places. That's beautiful. It's fascinating. Yeah. And in a sense, it's kind of like the sharks are behaving like the hurricane hunters. Yeah. Just uh, much scarier with, with bigger <laughs> teeth, right? That's so cool. <laughs> and, and I'm imagining these sensors that you're describing, they're very much what drop zones do as they fall out of the yeah. Hurricane Hunter aircraft. But I, I was wondering about this, reading through uh, some of the, the data that you've published with this. Gra gravity is predictable, right? You know the drop zone's going to go down. Right. Sharks aren't. Yep. So is there variability, yep. a, a lot of that, in the data that you get back? How can you necessarily uh, rely on it? You're looking for patterns? Yeah, I know that's a great question. And it's... it's, it's uh... It's something that is a challenge, and it's been one of the things we've been figuring out, is how do you get these data? Because there's a certain limited battery power in the tags, and the more the, the sensors are on, the quicker the battery drains. So you only want to turn the tags on when you're going to get good data. And so a lot of this is looking at vertical behavior, so the diving behavior of different species of sharks, and saying this species is going to be better for carrying a tag than this other one that, say, never comes to the surface. Yeah, that's my so, next question. Wh which, which species are you talking about? Great whites, obviously, they migrate away from the hurricane belt this time of year. So which, which species are you trying to get the most of? Well, right now we are focusing mostly on pelagic sharks, which are sharks that live in the open ocean. So things like shortfin mako sharks, mm -hmm. blue sharks. And we have tagged a few uh, white sharks just as a way to kind of figure out, are they going to serve well? And it looks like they would be a great, another great candidate to uh, carry these tags. But future work is going to be basically expanding the diversity of species we put these tags on, because each species has different capabilities of going to different parts of the ocean, whether so vertically cool. in terms of the depth or spatially. Yeah, so uh, effectively, you power on the sensor, shark comes up to periscope depth, beams <laughs> yep. back this information. Right. Are these eventually recoverable, or has that, act, uh, has that aspect been worked out? So this is the, the attack, attaching these types of tags to the fins have been done for decades at this point. And the way that we handle this is we have dissimilar metals, basically, in the nuts and bolts that we use to kind of attach it, and they corrode over time. And so uh -huh. the whole tag will fall off eventually, leaving the shark to swim along on its merry way. Cool. That makes sense. And last question, uh, how many sharks have you tagged so far? And is this for this year, or are we talking about the next few years for the big rollout? We are still kind of in the, the figuring it out stage, I would say. We've had some really good luck, and we've had a lot of good uh, – we've learned a lot for this last year. Mm -hmm. But it's really this next season, next year, will probably be when we deploy this more at scale. So far this year, we're hoping to put out probably about eight or ten more tags. That's awesome. And see what we learn. That's great. Well, listen, we would love to check back in because yeah. I've got a thousand more questions to yes. ask you. We just ran out of time. <laughs> Eric Carlisle, thank you so much for the time. And hopefully we can chat with you again probably later on this season or the beginning of next yeah. season. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Anytime. <laughs>